quirky shots. Not only does he go for them, but more importantly, he gets them. So what's nice. safe or deemed safe against, or at least 90% of the players is not safe against Luca. Again, he's, he's going to go for them. And that just puts pressure on the safety, as I said before, not just the length, but where exactly you're going to put the white. 60. I think Luca far less likely to get bogged down in tactics or game plans. Just sees it, pots it. <coughs> Very aggressive shot selection. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. You know, need to create something here. But I'm forward to there and putting, putting that red. Obviously, the pink blocking the path to the blue. Looks to be quite straight, even on the yellow. Obviously, loads of Q power. Besides, screw back for the reds. You need all of that power. Strike. 25. <laughs> 26. Looks like it could be end of break, but again. Pink ball. Picked out a little gem there. Of course, has the pink over the middle pocket to continue it. Somebody this dangerous, it's just an, an uneasy feeling to play against, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. His cue ball just seems to cover every blade of grass, so to speak, doesn't it? He's brilliant to watch, <laughs> unconventional, but he's definitely improved in, in these situations. When he's in close, you know, generally his cue ball does manoeuvre around the table, but his, his cue ball is, I think, improving all the time, actually. Yeah, absolutely. And you feel it's only going to get better. 40. There's no problem creating the 41. chances. And in amongst them, if he starts getting even more clinical, he's going to be very, very hard to beat. He's a player as well, I think it's difficult for other top players to get at. That's, you know, that's always part of it, isn't it? it you want to get someone at it, you know, get them under pressure. It's difficult to get pre put pressure on to Luca Brussel. That was another shot that was quite unconventional. There's always that thing in matches, isn't there, when you admire in some way your opponent, and there's a lot to admire with Luca when he's playing you. Shots like that, spinning into the pack, getting the white moving, you think, oh, that was a good shot. That was another one. There's a lot of that with Luca. Absolutely, yeah. As you said, you never really get, can't read too much off him. Great temperament. Uh, he's no tells as such. Very rarely do you see him get annoyed, bang the table like you might see with other players. And again, the biggest tell is, is that he never compromises. Doesn't go into a shell at these big occasions. World Championship was a classic example of that. That old Steve Davis adage to play as if it means nothing when it means everything. Such an asset. 63. Yeah, it's been quick fire stuff. And this black should be frame ball.
also as well 70. not intimidated by Ronnie a lot of times players have been a little bit apprehensive a little bit fearful 71. Luke has beaten him twice before and of course more importantly in the World Championship so that's not an issue Sometimes you've seen with players when they become world champion for the first time, they have been a little bit of a burden, or they were restricted them or they felt pressure. But I think if there's any player or person that can deal with really well, it's Luca. Just goes about his business. Looks like it. Loving life, loving playing snooker. Why wouldn't you? Seem to have travelled the world this summer. 86. Look at him, his post on social media. It was the best advertisement ever for winning the World Championship. Ninety-four. Ninety-five. It's been a lovely break. Yeah, fantastic break. The first red was outstanding. And there's the, the roar. The perfect response 100. by the world champion. 101. One hundred and seven. One hundred and nine. One hundred and twelve. It's so clear to see this boy's got talent to burn, isn't he? <laughs> talent in bundles. He's just brushing these in. Yeah, and Ronnie knows it very well. Ronnie was gushing in his praise after he'd beaten him for the talent he has. 127. So we're ho we were hoping for a good start with this 134 for Luca. That just signifies a brilliant break. A typical brisk and breezy, <coughs> excuse me, 134. Welcome back. We're halfway through the first session of the Shanghai Masters final. Ronnie O'Sullivan holding the advantage of three frames to two after an adventurous 75 break by Luca Brassell in frame five. It's been very noticeable throughout the whole tournament. Very rarely has a player potted a ball off the other opponent's break off. I don't think it's necessarily that the players are more conscientious this week than others. Sometimes the, the way the tables can play, the spread of the cloth can dictate that. It feels like some tournaments, no matter who's playing, after every break off, they've left their opponent a shot. And of course, at this level, that one shot at the start of the frame could be the frame, but that has not been a feature at all this week. And that's why the starts of the frames have been a bit more pro protracted. The player's been patient again looking to try and gain advantage, gain that first chance. strength can also be a weakness as in he's such a good long potter probably gets tempted or seduced into going for a couple that he really probably shouldn't one
little look there from Ronnie just to make sure it looks perfect. Six. Or to keep the white where the red is or just a little bit below it. Seven. Yeah, frustrated there, straight in the black. Very annoyed, not with that shot, just that he left himself straight 14. on the black. Such a strength in this game to be perfect on the black. Again, even there, could have played he was so close. To the pack, could have played a thicker safety. Brazil. Ronnie has never wanted to back off a match and sit back and wait on chances. But all gifts are gratefully received. And he's had a couple already in this frame from Luca, which almost nullifies the, I said adventurous, but really good 75 he made in the previous frame. You know, if he effectively sometimes, you don't like to, you don't mind losing frames, but losing them through your own really basic mistakes, do hurt. Yeah, One. Unforced errors, really, they are. Stephen Nicker opponent plays a series of safety shots, put you in trouble, and eventually you come unstuck, and you got well, fair play, you play that well, but the mistakes Luke has made safety-wise have been bread and butter safety shots. Yeah, an unforced error there from running, surprising. When he came to the table at the only getting just the one red. But again, it's these guys of instance here from Luca. Yeah, thinner than you want. As I said before, every safety shot you play doesn't have to be a very telling safety shot, doesn't have to be a winner. Your first priority when you're playing safe is to get it safe. He's not doing that today. Be patient. Yeah, you wouldn't think so, but there is actually an art to in snooker where every time you leave the table, leave it having played a decent shot or something. Or a leave where your opponent can't hurt you. The volume of that is telling in a match, isn't it? You just keep the guy at bay for a long period of time. It doesn't have to be a sparkling safety shot, but that's where Luke has got to tighten up. Yeah, it's what you're saying. It's literally like a consistent body of work over the course of the match. So your opponent has Six. to work for every chance he gets. Seven. And again, we're not working off the base that Lucas playing. Alan McManus or Fergal O'Brien, we're working off straightly off the standards of he's playing Ronnie O'Sullivan in a final. Chances are those little mistakes, he won't get away with it. the other guy tired of facing problems. It's kind of Fergal's driving up, which is correct. That's just typical. <laughs> Luca again. Brilliant to watch, obviously. I wouldn't like to be his dad Carlo though. <laughs> a bit stressy. Yeah, as I was saying, it's, it's a, such a good asset when you're in trouble to be able to get yourself out of trouble. It's just today, he's been the one putting himself in trouble. 19. But again, having said all that, only 3-2 behind. I said, looks, looks sharp, playing well. So nothing to worry about, far from it. Just maybe this evening 20. when the pressure's on. If we can tighten up, just 
just it's on a couple of shots in the best of nine best of 21 we could only be talking about five or six shots because when he gets in amongst them he's very fluent very positive 25. Twenty-six. Okay, I've just got to be careful here. I think it's not an absolute certainty. Then it looks like plain as like coming up cannon in the black. Okay, potting the pink it will go onto the black spot, which will just free up that area as well. Good that that was the time to take those extra couple of seconds. 32. And the extra 10 seconds he's taken there probably just means he cleared them up even a little bit quicker. If he doesn't lose position, of course. Yeah, it's quite tricky this one. Good weight. Yeah, played it nicely. Yeah. Yeah, just 39. certain moments in frames and matches, just to take those extra couple of seconds. Forty-five. Forty-six. You never quite know what the narrative 51. is going to be, but what it's been so far is that Luca Brussel is the one who's 52. doing the heavy scoring. Tony occasion having to not live off scraps but it's pick up on the odd mistake by Luca. But when he gets in, he's such a live wire act, isn't he? Luca Brazil, very unpredictable, unconventional, hard to pin down. Yeah, I think that was part of the attraction of this final. That he knew Luca wouldn't be intimidated, the fact that it's a final. But also he knew he's not intimidated for playing Ronnie. 59. He's just in his own little world there. His opponent is irrelevant. As great as Ronnie is, he can 65. do nothing sitting down. 66. And again, his cue ball control, as I said, could have been a little bit better. But all that's just done is just highlighted the skill, the talent that he has. And beautiful to watch. 72. Yeah, when he plays like this, it just seems to be totally free of doubt or anxiety. Eighty-three. Eighty-seven. Cue ball's getting its money's worth, isn't it? <laughs> Ninety-two. 
Okay, so pink and black for the century. Ninety-eight. Don't let us down now. Oh. Of course he doesn't. Look at Rizal. Oh, the end of spoiled it. Ninety-eight. But that didn't matter. Sorry, Sparkling stuff. From the world champion. It's back in level terms. Off we go then. Frame seven of ten in this first session. There's no doubt that it's disconcerting to play against, isn't it? Yeah. You know, for all that Ronnie's mind and game and all the attributes he has is the best has ever been. You, you can throw someone off kilter, can't you? Luca Brussel certainly can. Yeah, absolutely. Unsettling is the exact One. word you'd use. Tied into course the fact that the last couple of frames he's been sitting down at a little piece. That red at 3-1 was a bit easier. And now three all having it sitting down. Again, Ronnie likes to ideally bully players. And Luke is certainly not a player you can bully. He's not a person you can bully. I said he's six. If anything, looking the more stronger, more dominant player. Seven. And if one player is going to go on a little burst of a few frames in a row, certainly looks like Luca more likely to do it. Fourteen. Fifty. Yeah, I think for all that Luca has an all action style. In some sort of way, it's like he can sort of quietly creep up on a match, in a match, and creep up on his opponent and get away from you. It feels like ten minutes ago he was 3-1 behind. All of a sudden... 21. He's going along in his merry way. On a break of 21, the Reds are sitting there to go 4-3 in front. When did this happen? Yeah. He's like that. It's, it's a, as I say, he's got a, quite a bustling style, but he quietly just gets it done efficiently and it's just such a strange mix he has his, his own game yeah and you can also because he's so attracted to what as well even though you're his, you're his opponent you kind of nearly spend a bit of your time admiring it or nearly curious self what shot when you play oh god he hit he hit that shot well but that was a great shot and then if he does miss you it feels like you need a couple of moments to regroup yourself and yeah, refocus on your own game This whole manner, I wouldn't say Luca has or ever will have somebody you call like a rival. And 34. again, this match, even though it's a final, it's a totally different feel to when Ronnie played Higgins and certainly a different feel to when he played Selby. You just feel if he lost to Luca, it wouldn't hurt him as much as if he lost a major final to Selby. That can be a good thing, but also a bad thing.
42. 43. Yeah, he keeps you guessing. It's like this here, you know. You, he shouldn't be going into the pack. He probably won't, but it wouldn't surprise you. It's just a. There you go. It it, it kind of isn't the shot, because you know he's forty two in front. He's got maybe you know three loose ish 50. reds, but it's it's a risk going into the pack. But he goes in. All of a sudden, if this goes in, he's on easy street and he brushes the frame away. Yeah, he doesn't have to 51. be precise. In some ways, he just. Go into the four reds. If one of them pops out, well, I'll pot that. Pot the one after it. And it might take three or four shots, but then I'll get back into position. Whereas yeah. other players have, been, have to be precise because their potting isn't so good. It's, a, it's that kind of dance. It's a, at times it's a great strength, at times it can be a weakness. But certainly if he, if he tightened up his cue ball a little piece when he's in amongst them. And then if winning this world title gives him 54. In it, another injection of confidence and actually Im improves he's going to be a serious 55. serious contender and whereas before we would have thought of Luke as could he win, be a world champion yes all of a sudden you're looking at could this guy be the world number one could he be the top player yes maybe not in the next year or two but please God at some point Ronnie, John 62. and Mark will just go get rid of them 63. You could see a scenario now, three, four years down the road, where Luca is the best player in the world. <laughs> so the Neil Robertsons, Mark Selby's, Judd Trump's, other potential world 70. number ones, other potential players looking to dominate or become the man. 71. It's worrying, worrying for them. Thank you, love, not something me or you have to worry about, Alan. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. There's not so much untapped potential. 78. In some ways, it's, it's endless, isn't it? 79. Yeah, it's not even a case of the player he is, it's the player he could be co become. 86. 87. 94. 95. And what seems like no time at all, this black for another century and it goes it's his second of the final so far it's only going to be 4-3 in well, front but Luca Brussel is absolutely flying at the moment 103 Yeah, the black goes astray, but it's another century on the board. Ronnie O'Sullivan is going to have to do something quickly about this. Because at the moment, the world champion is in control. He's in front for the first time. Welcome back to what potentially could be a pivotal frame in this Shanghai Masters final. It's the last of the session. Session of 10 frames. Before they come back tonight, the first two eleven will be the target to lift the two hundred and ten thousand pounds first prize. One hundred and five thousand pounds to the runner-up, but that's inconsequential. What is important is the title itself, and Ronnie O'Sullivan is just showing signs here that he's going to finish this session the stronger of the two, because in the main today so far, Luca Brazil is by far been the stronger, he's been the one scoring, but Ronnie's in front. Yeah, what makes this match so appealing is that no matter who's Five. at the table, it's still great to watch. I'm really feel a bit sad that this is the last frame and it's over after this. Of course, Dave Hend and Neil Foles doing it tonight. It's been 
very entertaining, very intriguing. The, the dreaded D cell. It's going to be end of break, barring something special from the Brown. <laughs> what an effort that was! 14. Even to find the cannon on the punch. Great effort. I think you can gauge finals sometimes. As you say, sorry, sorry this is the last of the session. You're just enjoying it that much. There's so many different things going on. And it's gone gone by in the blink of an eye, it seems. Yeah. Very enjoyable. When they're actually at the table just to watch them play. The skill, the talent that's been on show. But also nearly lurking in the background there's a certain there's the the dynamics, the tactics, the psychological impact. And again that's only just gonna be magnified obviously this evening when the trophies won and lost. We already had the European Masters. Great tournament. Barry Hawkins played great. But you certainly feel with this tournament, the calibre of players in it, that this has really kick started the season. And again, of course, we have such a busy run of tournaments coming up. And again, for players that aren't in the top 16, you're looking at the standard that's been on this week and the work they're going to have to do and the standard of play they're going to have to produce to get into the. 16 because the players we've seen, we don't really see them dropping out of the 16 too easily. Yeah, one of the big ranking events in China actually gets underway tomorrow. The International Championship qualifiers at Bonds Forge in Sheffield. Oh, brilliant long red by Ronnie and a perfect result. Yeah, obviously this is the one that everyone wants to watch and glad you're watching this with us. See tomorrow the international championship underway. Barry Hawkins, the winner of that uh, European Masters, as Fergal mentioned, he plays tomorrow. As does Jimmy White, Stephen Hendry, Stephen Maguire. Seven. Watch that with us on Discovery Plus. Great to have your company for it all week, Monday to Saturday. The here and now is the big frame, the last of the session. Eight. What a big one it is. I think we both sort of suggested... Fifteen. And just halfway through that last frame, the previous frame, Ronnie senses moments... He's got, he's got that eye about him at the moment. In. Full concentration and like total concentration. Yeah, you wouldn't say Luca let him off the hook at four three, but it looked like he might go five three. Obviously, we've seen John let him off the hook, Mark let him off the hook, and from then on. Which became like a different animal as such. Smelled blood and just did everything a little bit better. Forward there. Again, he just, it's like he's realised the significance of having a 6 4 lead as if they'd be tempted to think of a 5 4 up, even if I lose this frame 5 all. Okay, we come back tonight, but now he wants the lead. 
and then the other side, Luca played quite well and all of a sudden could be behind going into tonight. Mm, yeah, that was uh, so very risky. I must confess, I didn't see that kind of move coming where you know, I just thought he made a move there that he didn't have to. Sometimes it's about what you don't do, isn't it? Yeah, I think the fact that he, he was at the table, it was his visit. He was very reluctant to, to walk away. If it had been left that shot by Luca, he might have played something different. But because it was his visit, wanted to win in one visit, got a little bit seduced Six. into playing. A risky shot, but wasn't that easy a pot, but very careless to go and off. And it's the fact that he went in off Seven. has given Luca this chance. And again, by breaking down, just magnifies the importance of this frame. Luca gives any frame any more importance than the previous one. Such a, such a great asset as well. 13. Meanwhile, I'll just give them a crunch, get them open and be able to put something. Yeah, the epitome there of fast and loose, wasn't it? It's a brilliant way to be able to play. I know, certainly myself, and I'm guessing yourself, you, it was difficult to get into that mode, ever. <laughs> Yeah, we're not being critical, we're just jealous. Yeah, absolutely, I'll look at this shot. If there's any justice in the world, it'll run. Oh, not quite. <laughs> 20. Yeah, he's usually shot. Plays with such great freedom. I don't even think Luca can take on the double. <laughs> So he gets you, he, get, he probably gets his opponents as well, thinking things that are not even there. You think, what's he going to do next? Nothing's a surprise. Yeah, yeah. Have to think a little bit nearly out of the box and playing him and commentating on as much as. Look at myself, 20. The parameters of shot selection are different with Luca. Yeah, and I wasn't even talking about that double. I was talking about the one in the, the right side cushion. She was. Okay, 21 in front. Needs cover. He's got it. Staying aggressive, eyeing up the probably the more difficult red of the two on. Not this time. I see 
more difficult of the two. I do believe the red on the pink spot does pass. We're about to find out, though. Yeah, Ronnie under pressure. If anything gets more aggressive, really tries to take the, the game by the scruff of the neck. Because again, that red, Lucas just potted. It was a shot to nothing for, for Ronnie. Maybe you could argue percentages were greater, but I think it nearly rather miss than show weakness. And he felt turning down that red would be taking a backward step. Basic error not to be on the straight one of the two. Cue ball going to be running around again, round the back of the yellow probably. Just got to run, but the brown is an option. Again, the least of Luca Brussel's problems when he plays, I think, is actually potting balls. He just finds it so easy. He's fallen off a log. So, what we are going to get. There's a close finish to this last of the session. False. Thirteen. Yeah, there's an angle on the blue here. Might be able to pot it and just screw back towards the side cushion. The red on the right hand side. Which always felt the red up in bulk was going to be the more difficult of the two. Can't, can't do too much with this red. Just really try and gotta make sure the pot hopefully is an angle then and a colour to then go and attack the last red. Yeah, it looks to be very straight on the black. Nineteen. He's potted seven balls in this contribution. He hasn't been in position once, and he still isn't. Yeah, you're reluctant to say this is end of break, and he has to play safety because God knows what he could manufacture here. I think the percentage, though, is to try and put the colour, get as close as you can to the red, and leave yourself ideal on the red to play a safety where you're guaranteed to keep the red safe with every chance of getting a snooker. to force something. Look up yourself, 19. That wasn't. <coughs> yeah, unusual there for Luca. A little bit of body movement trying to force an angle that wasn't there. And of course that body movement led to that miscue. Then it seemed unnecessary to be trying to force. Again, if you pot the black, even if he's playing the red from distance, he had the first chance to play the tell in safety, which he gave away. And again, obviously, a hidden hope. He hit it. And he... sure if he's left a shot to nothing. These type of mini frames last, which like a, a mini game, I said, on the last red. Who pots the next red? You make Ronnie a strong favourite. Living on the edge at the moment is Luca. 
think he's lost his way a, just a fraction. You know, when you do that, you have a lash at one, yeah, trusting to luck, and then there he, he's a wee bit unsettled. I think he knows. He, I think he's trying to play a bit of a bluff game at the moment where, yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm free and easy, and but, but he knows the importance of this deep in his heart. Yeah, I don't think he'll refuse this one. Great pass. Sure was. Now, what do you do? It's, is the roll up behind the pink ever in his mind? Kind of word, no. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> yeah. It should be in his mind. I'm not saying he should play it, but it's yeah. It's an option. <laughs> it's an option. Well, I think yeah. he's looked at the pink. Well, there you go. He's a box of tricks and a box of. Surprises, but I guess one. if you don't fancy the pot, and it's the stage of the match when perhaps he's he's probably right. A risk is too much. I think it's the right shot. Yeah, but I, but I would say that. <laughs> well, me too, general. But uh, yeah, I think just given the circumstances, it probably was. Has he got his reward? It looks like it. Is that the biggest a mini incident of the final there? The end off tension abound. And the grand stage at the moment on the grandest of stages. In. Five. Yeah, I don't think you'd necessarily say Luca was unfortunate going off. Should have really avoided the middle pocket. Nine. Yeah, the tension all of a sudden has subsided. This sitter of a blue. And Ronnie O'Sullivan 14. is going to go into tonight's session with the two-frame lead that he was after. Luca Brussel has been the better player for large parts of this first session. But in the end, it's Ronnie O'Sullivan who won the close frames when it mattered, and it really mattered in frame 10. And he got the verdict in the end. So Ronnie goes in. The world champion has it all to do when we come back tonight because Ronnie O'Sullivan leads... Six frames to four in a race to 11.